Right, you saw the title of this video, you know what it's about. It's about image quality. But let me just first preface this video by just establishing a few things about image quality. Oftentimes I hear the discussion revolve around the specs of the cameras, which camera does this better and that better. But I think uh, before you talk about specifications, there are like three things that I think is not talked about nearly as often as it should. And I think there needs to be more emphasis placed on those three things. The first of the trio would be lighting. Basics of lighting, key, fill, and back. And it works especially well if you control all three aspects of them and that you are not subjected to the sort of variables of the outside world. I admit it, I used to be the window light YouTuber. Everything just stand right next to the closest window which has the greatest sunlight and only film in daytime. But I think as you step up your game, you want to sort of increase the production value and hence the look of your videos, right? The clouds will always come in and out. That is something you cannot control. Not only does this bring down the exposure of your footage, but also so it just completely wrecks the white balance as well. And then like throughout various parts of your videos, as you're editing, you'll notice that bits here and there, they just have a completely different look. Soft lighting makes a very, a very pleasing look to your image, especially if you're filming people. Okay, look, I'll just open up the blinds now. I mean, yeah, you know, this can work, but then see these, the window blinds is, yeah, not ideal. And if I raise the blinds, then I just get a complete flood. Just close that down. So yes, that's the first of the trio. The second I would say is more like composition. Uh, so like I'm not directly center like this like I used to. Um, in fact I'm more like uh, sort of two thirds or a third in the shot just following the rules of thirds in the grids and all that and like just being dead center right here like this it like works if there are symmetries going on. If like everything in your set design is very perpendicular, straight, not angled, then uh, yeah, you know, set it, you know, straight on like this, if you have a symmetrical background. And finally, the third thing, oh my God, so often overlooked. The story, oh my god, the story. If anything, I'd say the story is the umbrella term that dictates how like the cinematography and the the audio sort of sound design is, like di dictating why it is that they are the way they are. So yeah, those are the three things that I think is often neglected and overlooked. It is uh, location, it is lighting, it is uh, set design and composition, and the story. And speaking of lighting, the sun just keeps going in and out. Once you have nailed those three things down, then it comes down to the question of camera specifications and image quality. And how significant the specifications are to your production depends on what is being filmed. That's a big enough deviation away from the main topic of this video. Uh, I, I'm supposed to just like draw a comparison between like the Ursa Mini 4.6K and the Blackmagic Pocket cinema camera 4k yeah that was supposed to be the main subject of this video but i always just go on a big tangent about cameras okay with that said uh enjoy these beautiful b-rolls you two working hard. Okay, well, since the sun is like at this side, let's move over to the other side where the sun is not. 
and let's see uh, these two cameras perform in sort of highlight retention. Uh, speaking of highlight retention, this camera has none, as you can see. It's all just nuclear white. You know, so yeah, I'm out of focus, but you know, the unfortunate thing about having the Metabone Speed Booster is that uh, my sort of maximum aperture value is like f11, so it can only close down so much. Um, yeah, it's because it's giving like increased, like one stop of increased light or something. So instead of say going to f16, like as the minimum aperture, it's like the minimum is f11. But yeah, it's like double-edged sword, you know. It's um, now on the Sigma 18 to 35. Instead of like maxing out at like f 1.8 slash like 1.7, it's actually uh, reads f 1.2. So yay optics. Shutter f8 ISO 800 5600 Kelvin, like daylight, yeah. ND filter applied. Um, oh, shit. ISO 800 daylight f8 180 18mm. Alright, recording but at 400 ISO. Okay, ISO 400. 180 shutter f1.7 1600 ISO 3200 uh, Kelvin white balance 25 PS 18 millimeters. Okay, well, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video, like just seeing how close the Pocket 4K is to say a, a proper big cinema camera, even though the, the name Mini is in, like, is in it. When image quality differences are so negligible, I think then the conversation shifts to reliability and usage, depending on the sort of uh, work that you do. Do you need all those IO ports? Are you working in a professional setting with film crews and all that? Or are you more run and gun solo sort of operator and you want something lightweight? Are you doing travel vlogs and whatnot? My personal opinion, like as to which one is like the better all rounder in terms of being adaptable to many different situations, I would say the, the Pocket uh, 4K because it's lightweight, it's got uh, newer technologies, it's got Blackmagic RAW, it has superior low light. And I would add this little sort of tidbit, it's that like the people who were introduced to the filmmaking sort of landscape via DSLR slash mirrorless uh, filmmaking like I was, the Pocket 4K would be the perfect sort of entry for them. The first time around that I attended the uh, Ursa mini like workshop, yeah, the menu was exactly the same. So thanks to the Pocket 4K, I was already familiar with all the controls. But anyways, I hope this video gets the conversation going beyond the just the image quality of each camera, just like pixel peeping and everything and talking about the color science and whatnot and just let's have the conversation like shift more towards usability and reliability i hope that's what this video sort of entices just take all the considerations you have and sort of apply it to some places like 
Joe Rogan's new studio setup. Like, oh my god. Okay, rant over. Thanks for watching. Keep on procrastinating and uh, let's get the conversation going. Bye bye. Camera slam. Some weird lighting, huh? Backlighting here because of this thing that my friend gifted to me because I lost my other light. Okay, I, I don't have any more to say, but uh, goodbye. He says goodbye too. Cut.